Oh yeah. And now, live from North Platte High School Studio B, welcome to Bulldog Banner, where students, stakeholders, and alumni come together to transverse the transformative power of education. Hi, I'm Tucker. I'm Will. And this is the Bulldog Banter. We talk about stuff, talk to people about stuff, and give you the latest banter. Bulldog style. Today's guest is Piper Codwell. Hi, guys. Yay, Piper. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> Will. All right, so first question, Piper. How was it like going from like a full-time student to a full-time entrepreneur? So it seems like it would be a big change, but really, like, I kind of would wake up, go to school, and then afterwards, it was just like sell shoes, go to Whitetail. Um, now it just kind of goes from wake up, do my, I do online school right now. I'm planning on coming back in January, actually. But it's kind of just wake up, do online school, uh, hop around Pizza Ranch, Whitetail. And then, you know, once everyone else gets out of school, that's when my main business hours are. So it wasn't too drastic of a change. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So tell us more about your business, everything. Yeah, so Prosperity is I resell shoes, clothing, watches, uh, you know, electronics, basically anything that can be resold for any type of profit. Um, I started, so I went to California in 2019 to visit my brother, and he had given me a pair of shoes. And then ever since then, it was just like I bought so many shoes. And then once I outgrew them, uh, you know, sold the first pair, and, like, I made 100 bucks. And at that time in, like, sixth grade, I was like, hundred dollars and you know then I kind of started to see the the profits come in and I was like yeah this would be this would be awesome and so you know I was selling shoes out of my room and then it grew to downstairs and then it grew to the garage and then my parents I think just got sick of it and helped me find a way to open a store which was in August of last year that's awesome <laughs> so how'd you come up with the name prosperity okay everyone always asks me this and honestly I don't even know. I was just thinking, like, you think about the cool resale brands like Supreme, mm -hmm. and I was like, hmm, what's something that's, like, different? And I was like, you know what? I don't even know what this word means fully, but we're going to call it this. <laughs> <laughs> so there's really no story behind it? Just... Not really, but actually what's crazy is, you know how everyone, like, talks about angel numbers and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So every time I'd open my phone, it would be 1028. And one day I just Googled, like, what is 1028? And in the definition it says prosperity. And I was like. This is a sign. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> that's the next question. Let's see. So starting a business and everything, what do you think or who do you think was your biggest role model or your biggest influence from that? So it was definitely my brother. He obviously introduced me into shoes, got me like my first two or three pairs. Um, we wore the same shoe size, so it was always like I'd steal it from him. And then once I kind of got going, he would he would always take them from me. But, yeah, I remember, like, when I opened my very first location, he had a broken ankle, so he's, like, riding around on a little scooter. But he was there with me, like, every step of the way, all the way back from 2019, if you think in five years, kind of what it's built. I really tar started taking it serious, like, two years ago. But, yeah, no, definitely my brother. He's He was the main support through through all of that. So going back to the business standpoint and everything, do you think growing up, seeing your parents obviously having so many businesses, do you think that influenced you to open your own business? Oh, yeah, 100%. In like <laughs> in sixth grade, I would I remember one Halloween, all the candy went on sale, bought a bunch of candy, and I started like selling it at school, and I thought I was making, making good money. That actually got shut down because the principal thought I was selling not good substances <laughs> but yeah no like that just has always been something I've been into just like watching my family right because it started with whitetail and then turn into the bike shop and then all the real estate places that we own and, and rent those out like it was just always so amusing to me I sold bikes with my dad for a while and it was just like yeah like I want to I want to do this and and shoes was just something that I was interested in and it just kind of yeah it's kind of yeah. took off I guess <laughs> How do you learn from that entrepreneurship? Like, how do you slowly grow into becoming an entrepreneur? So I would say it really started with, like, the first case I really remember was when the eclipse happened when I was in, like, fourth grade. People were coming in, and I'd be, like, yelling in the back. I'd be like, I need a medium of this design. And we would just pump out shirts. And I just remember all the, like, 
not even the money that we made, but just the connections and like all the different type of people traveling through here that I met. And I just thought that was so cool. And right, I learned a lot of the skills from the t-shirts and then the bikes was really, really the bikes is the same as the shoes. You know, you buy for X amount of dollars, you find something that's their size, you know, their type of riding, and then, you know, kind of cater to them and then make, make those margins. So I guess I really, there's nothing my parents have done that hasn't put me where I am now. Like, I'm very fortunate to have, have that supportive family and where they come from, like all the things that I've learned. Yeah. How do you buy and sell? So do you like buy in bulk or do you buy single or do you like, how do you do all your sneaker selling and watch selling and everything? So my location is buy, sell, trade. So a lot of it is like, you know, if, like Will, he, he'll come in and he'll have bought a pair from me like a year ago. He'll be like, hey, I'm just kind of done wearing these. I want something new. So either I give him cash or store credit to get something new. That's a lot of what I do. And then I'd say like 80% of my business is just bulk buying. Uh, I actually have like 300 units of shoes coming in right now, getting ready for this uh, new location to open. So yeah, it's just a lot. Like there's not really one set answer. It's kind of just whatever comes my way, which is really cool. So going back to buying and everything, what do you think the craziest thing you've either bought or sold has been so far? So right now I have, so it's a Ben and Jerry's ice cream collab. It's a Nike Dunk. And so they released a few general pairs, not very many. And then they released a friends and family pair. It's got like a, a milk, or not a milk carton, ice cream carton type of, type of box. And there's probably very few pairs out there. I think there's two other on the market and I have a size 12 brand new right now. It's all the friends and family packaging, which is really cool. I think that's about a $7,000 shoe, but it's just an awesome, like it's so colorful. It's a mm. crazy story. I think that's probably one of my favorite or like most unique shoes I have. I feel like I remember when you got those. Yeah, I, I got those I, at not that long ago. Denver Sneaker Con, I yeah. think in like March or April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. it's awesome. What's been your favorite, like what's your favorite all time shoe that you've bought, sold, worn? So I swear this is no one's favorite shoe. Everyone hates this shoe, but it's called the Volt Gold Jordan 1. Like on the upper, it's like a, a neon yellow, yellow, like color yellow. And then on the bottom, it's like a mustard yellow and everyone hates it. But that was like the first shoe I bought with my, my money and yellow is my favorite color. And I'll wear that shoe till the day I die, but everyone hates it. But I think, I think that's my favorite. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, what's your favorite memory of selling shoes out of anywhere? So I have a lot of good memories. I opened on August 5th. That was the first time I ever had like a brick and mortar location. Um, I actually have this video. There's this guy that makes music and my brother was filming for him. And I just wanted to stop by the store like two days before I opened just to check it out. I just remember this guy was videoing just kind of being like, hey, come, come check it out this Saturday. And in the background, it's like my brother, and he was like, um, he was like, look at all you've done. I'm so proud of you, sis. And like, that's that's my favorite video. And I just think back on like, you know, not even with my brother, but just the memories of my friends and my other family. It's just really, you meet such a broad amount of people that you can't really put a price on like the stories that people come in and tell you, or even like the memories that one shoe can hold. I think that's really cool. Yeah. So awesome. speaking of memories, do you think you're going to make some new memories at your new store? And, or do you want to tell us about your new yeah, store coming yeah. out? So December 14th is the goal for now. So that'll be on a Saturday. Uh, we just closed our new building. The day we closed, I moved, moved all my shoes in, got everything set up. So I'm, I'm nearly ready. Um, it's 409 North Dewey is the location. So it's uh, the old River Gun Gallery. So it's right on the bricks. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I know what you're so yeah, we just closed on that building and I'm, I'm so excited. So it was a jewelry store and then the gun gallery. So it's got really nice like jewelry cases. Yeah. And it's just such a unique store. Like I really haven't seen, you know, you think of a shoe store, you kind of think of my first locations. You walk in and it's just like shoes mm -hmm. all over. Mm -hmm. It's got like really like kind of looks like a bougie look. You know, I'm very, very excited for that. All the memories that are going to come. Um, you know, Andrew, Andrew Weitzel? Yeah. Like 308 Kicks. Mm -hmm. So he's actually, this isn't anything set, but he's talking about renting a part of that building from me. So we'd be kind of going on in on this together. So, yeah, definitely, like, looking forward to hanging out with him at the store. You know, all the, all the students coming in. It's next to the prom shop, so, like, dress season, yeah. you know, 
you get you get your suit or you get your dress, come look at some shoes. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. What do you think your biggest goal is going to be from that or just in the future in general? I think, I think a big goal of mine <coughs> is to just – I want to I want to expand eventually. Yeah. Like I've been thinking about that like even Kearney or all the way up into Omaha Grand Island like obviously that'll take time but I just right now it's like from where it's gone since I started taking it serious 2 years ago to now it's like I've been I've been considering a lot of options like that. That'd be awesome. Do you want to just keep selling shoes or do you want to expand to more products or uh, you've already expanded a little bit, but do you want to yeah. keep expanding? Yeah. So the main thing obviously has been shoes. I think that'll be the, obviously the main priority. I've gone really big into clothing recently. Like, uh, the popular ones right now are like spider or denim tears, sell those for upwards of like $400 at times. Um, I think the like newest growth that I've had is watches. The market for watches is crazy. Uh, like right now I have a, a one of one Nike Rolex collab that was gifted to one of the creators of Air Force One, Tim Gallagher. And that's, mm. uh, someone told me that, you know, I could reach up to like $60,000 for a piece like that. So it's just, it's just more, more business, more opportunity. How did you even get your hands on that? Like just, I don't even know. I had a friend <laughs> that lives in New Jersey and he's like, he texted me, he's like, yo, look at this, look at this. And I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, it's it's crazy the type even with shoes like you come across player edition like uh, mm -hmm. Oregon gets a lot of player edition shoes that are just for that team, so it's cool. There's like a lot, a lot of crazy things like that that I come yeah. across. So going back to the shirts, is it just like popular brands just blow up, blow down? Because you said four hundred dollars for just some shirts. How does that market? It just fluctuates the whole time. Yeah. So you think about like Supreme, and they'll drop something. And it'll probably be worth a lot at that time. And then when they drop the next season, you know, it, it'll be cheaper. And then as years goes on, that piece might go up a lot in value. So it's just everything Everything has its highs and its lows, which is kind of fun because it's almost like, you know, you invest in something. And obviously I've taken a lot of losses over over my career, but it, it it's cool. Like brand name has a lot to do with it and like availability and how limited it is. So, yeah, it's it's crazy the amount of pe the amount of money people will pay for things like that. Yeah. So going back to like the business standpoint and everything, who do you think your main clientele is? I would say a lot of it is the high school kids. Like it's just no no one's gonna say no to come in and get a nice pair of like hundred dollar hundred dollar panda dunks or something that'll match with them every day or match with their outfits every day. Um, it's a, it's very broad. I have people. I sold a shoe like this big. It was like a size two C for their newborn baby. I sell things like that. I have older guys come in and they have shoes from like late '90s that they're trying to sell me. It's like, it's such a broad clientele and like, yeah, it, it's awesome though. Yeah. So have you ever seen a high school kid just come in and buy something just wild, like super expensive, crazy? Yeah, yeah. I have kids where they'll get their paychecks, and it's like they're like 13. They don't pay for gas. They don't pay for food. <laughs> they're just like, I got paid $800 this week. What can I get? They come and buy like four pairs of Yeezys or something. I'm like, I mean, I'm not complaining, but it's crazy. You you get a lot of that, actually. You'd, you'd be surprised how many times people come in with a wad of cash. I'm like, what can I get for this yeah. money? <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> what do you think your biggest business deal has been so far? So... In terms of buying, I do a lot of, like, buyouts. I've had people in Kearney where they're like, hey, I've been collecting for six years. Come buy things. That was, like, my first big one. I had these two guys in Kearney. Their apartment was just filled of supreme accessories, shoes, clothing. I think that was about $15,000 that I had spent that day. And then, obviously, you go to shoe events. That's, like, an endless amount of buying mm. and trading and selling. Um, I think... I actually drove to Iowa with Nick probably a month ago and sold 102 pairs to these. I think they're like my age, just mm -hmm. these two two boys reselling out of their house as well. So it's just like there's a lot of that, a lot of bulk buying and selling, which is awesome. Yeah. You mentioned those sneaker cons. How mm -hmm. are those? Like, is that just a huge event of like a tight-knit community? Yeah. Community? Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's crazy. I go to a lot in like Denver and Arizona. Um out in California too. 
it's just like you have up to like 30,000 people probably give or take coming in and out throughout the day. It's just hundreds of tables with sneakers and everyone looking for shoes. It's just it's like crazy. It, it's it's actually a lot of fun. You you get to recognize the faces and, you know, more so for me, it's like going and hanging out with people with common interests. But yeah, it's it's a very awesome experience. What do you think your favorite event has been? I went to uh, Phoenix Got Soul this year, which is like SneakerCon and Got Soul are like the two big, two big events. And I went to Got Soul Phoenix, and that was just like unlike anything I've ever seen. They had special guests, like they had I can't remember who it was, but they had rappers that were there. <laughs> they had all these like YouTube people, and. It was just crazy. They have like a, I don't know if you ever seen the big gold Travis Scott head, the inflatable. Oh yeah. That's like what that's from. Um, yeah, I would say that's that's probably one of my favorite events I've been to. That was just in April or May, I believe. Yeah, I've seen like TikToks and Instagram reels of those sneaker cons of just people like you just know, crowds of people. Yeah, yeah. It's just so many people like waves and waves. <laughs> right. Yeah. Does that get stressful at times being there? Definitely. Like. So when you have a table and you have all your shoes, you have like 10 people trying to talk in your ear and offer you on different pairs. It's just like it's a little stressful at times. But it's, honestly, that's like the most fun I have. Like any opportunity I get to go to events, it's like I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> so watches again. That's, mm -hmm. that's your newest product. So you're mm -hmm. selling and buying watches. How's that like? Yeah. So it's definitely more of like – so I do a lot of shipping and – um especially with shoes, I'll ship out a lot every single day. And with watches, you know, you're spending minimum around $10,000. And, you know, I've sold a, it was a, gosh, what was it? It was a paddock and it was like $182,000 or something like that. So it gets crazy. It's just large amounts of money. It's just really the same as shoes though. You know, yeah. everyone has a specific thing mm -hmm. they're looking for and yeah. Yeah, it's it's awesome though. It's it's cool to be able to just throw out like people will text me and they're like, "I need this watch. This is my budget. It's like four hundred thousand dollars." I'm like, I'm trying to get like you. <laughs> <laughs> so like shipping those type of watches is that oh, how, is that super stressful? It gets scary. Yeah, because you know you can insure packages, but you don't want to put hundred thousand dollars on yeah. a package and get robbed. So it's like you put like a hundred dollar insurance. You just you just pray. <laughs> you <Yeah>. just pray. <laughs> Honestly, that's how you got to do it. Have you sold anything to like a big famous person or have any like locally famous people hit you up for something? Yeah. So I've sold shoes more local. I sold to a few Husker players. Like they had a banquet last year and a bunch of them text me. They want shoes for like themselves and their girlfriends and stuff. So sold to a few Husker players, um, like MLB players. I think one guy from Texas that I'm in touch with, he's bought, he wears like a size 15. Oh, so he always, he's like, hey, what are you having a 15? But yeah, no, it's cool. And then you go to the bigger events and you have like the the bigger YouTubers and stuff that are there. And uh, yeah, no, it, it's cool. Just the the possibilities of people to meet and, yeah. and everything is really awesome. Do you think um, just the entire social media standpoint of your business has helped you you think that's a, your main? Yeah, I would, I would have nothing without social media. That's how I started selling was just on my Snapchat. Now most of what I do is through my Instagram. Um, I film YouTube videos mostly at like shoe events and things like that. But without social media, it, it, would, be, it would be so difficult. I remember one day I had an Instagram reel that like got a bunch of plays. I got over 600 followers that day. And obviously that turned into a bunch of sales. So Definitely social media has been, like, my main priority yeah. recently. <clears throat> so, out of the blue, Mr. Mm -hmm. Willie told us you're a heck of a drone pilot. When are you going to come back to MPHS and help us with our drone stuff for Bulldog Productions? Yeah, so, like I said, I'm doing online school right now. I'm planning on coming back in January, uh, right out my junior year, and then have go to school for a full senior year. Um yeah, so I do a lot of drone. It's like FPV drones, so you wear the goggles and then you oh, like yeah. see what the drone's seeing. So yeah, I, I was really into that. Like my brother filmed for a lot of really cool. He filmed for Levi's, like the jeans brand. Oh, yeah. uh, he filmed for Bad Bunny. He did a music video for him in Puerto Rico. So he did like a lot of awesome stuff. So he taught me all that. But yeah, I was talking to Mr. Willie before this. I was like, I'm so excited. I took digital media, but I'm like, I want to do video production. I want to, you know, get back into all that stuff. I think that'd be really awesome. Yeah. 
How was that change going from actual school to online school? It was difficult. On okay, so I guess I've been talking about my brother a lot. Uh, I went to school for two weeks last year, and then on a Sunday evening, you know, just normal nighttime routine, getting ready to go. My brother was actually in California filming uh, a drone job, and right, we got this call, and my brother had passed away, and. You know, it just kind of turned into like a few days of not going to school and then a few weeks. And then it was like, okay, I'm too far behind. So that's when I decided to make the switch to online school. I hate to talk about it so much, but it's just like, the, you get so sad, like going through a loss like yeah. that. Like a lot of it was just like moping around and like I wouldn't even sell shoes or do anything productive really. And then once I kind of made that switch, start getting back into school or like shoes and school and stuff, it's like, it, it, it was such a drastic change obviously from going to school to no school under those circumstances. But now that I'm like doing school regularly and selling shoes, like I, I think I'm just ready to be back, like the environment of people at school and going to, you know, going to football games, volleyball games, just experiencing those things. Like I miss that a lot. I yeah. think about that a lot. So I'm just ready to come back. Yes. Yeah. Cause kids talk about, Oh yeah, school's so bad. School's all this, school's all that. Right. You don't think it's like, once you get it taken away from you. Right. I was like, one of those kids. I was like, <laughs> I, I literally, I think the two weeks I was here, I didn't make it through a full week. Like, I, I missed a few days, and it was just so stressful, and I was like, man. But then, like, being away from it, it's like, I took it, I took it for granted so much. Even walking through the halls and, like, being like, oh, my gosh, I sold those shoes to that person. Or seeing people, like, I remember everyone would wear those uh, yellow prosperity hoodies. Yeah. Like, I just found that so cool, and then you get that taken away, and it's like, man, like, I just can't wait to be back in that environment. So... Coming back to school, what's like the main thing you're really looking forward to other than just kind of being back? Yeah, no, like I said, it's like seeing those people wearing like prosperity hoodies or, you know, the shoes for me. And then like I was saying earlier, like I enjoyed so many of the classes I took here, like graphic design, um, video production, digital media, all that stuff. Like that was like right in my alley. And honestly, a lot of it, like the editing skills I learned and stuff, that that helps me every day with my with my business and marketing. Yeah. <clears throat> so how does like the recovery process, like not trying to come back from the like missing school, but like how hard is that making up those past days that you've missed? It's it was difficult. Like, OK, so I went to two weeks of my sophomore year. Right now, I'm currently trying to catch up on credits to come back and do the alternative school here. So I'll have to grind out my sophomore, my last half of sophomore and junior year this year, if that's possible. So honestly, like my main thing was like, man, I wish I really would have kept with it. Just, it was hard. It was like very mentally draining thinking about like all the text I had in my phone, people asking what was going on. It's like, man, if I go back, am I gonna have to deal with everyone asking me or like no one asking me because I don't want to make it awkward. Yeah. So it was just like, it was very difficult and then I felt very discouraged and like unmotivated. But like I said, now that I'm like on track and doing better, I'm just I'm just excited to be back and like get get my life on a normal routine again. Yeah. So in short, <laughs> school is not that bad. No, school is not that bad, I promise. <laughs> I promise. It, it's better to sit in a in a classroom all day than lay in your bed and mope yeah. around. I promise. <laughs> you think that was like one of your bigger motivate motivators to motivator <laughs> motivator. <laughs> um, oh, that's much of a thought. Thanks, Hector. No, I get what you're saying. That that definitely was like, like the loss of my brother. Considering he got me into into shoes and drones and videography. Like I literally just wanted to be just like him when I was little. He's 13 years older than me, so it was like I was that little sister. I was like, oh, I like that because you like that. I wear that because you wear that. And so it's just like once that happened, like even looking on text messages or videos he had sent, not even to me, but other people where it was just like him encouraging me and believing in me. It's like, like, this is what I want to do. Like, that's my main motivator is I like make him proud, make my family proud. And yeah, just I keep him with me in a, in a lot of things that I do. Yeah. <clears throat> so speak on motivation. Do you have any motivation or like words of advice you would want to give students or anybody? Yeah. So. I was actually watching my mom's interview that you guys did with her. And when you guys asked her that question, I was like, oh, I'm going to say go for it. And then she sat there and she was like, just go for it. Like, you took my idea. <laughs> but no, honestly, it's like just 
do you like I was so scared like posting YouTube videos and like Instagram videos I was like everyone's gonna think I'm a cornball they're gonna make fun of me <laughs> and and then like that was a big thing about not going to school anymore is it was just kind of like I really don't care like I'm you know I'm trying to better my future better my business so it's like I'm just gonna take the risk and start putting and there's a lot of times I probably have embarrassed myself and been people's uh, main topic of conversation but like honestly it's just so fun for me like like just filming and being behind the camera or being in front of the camera like that's all just it's what I love to do yeah it's awesome well well thank you for yeah, coming thank on you very much. and yeah. thank you for the new hoodies new hoodies go check oh, yeah, out you guys prosperity like them? prosperity those drop on opening day there's only 10 in each size got the sweatsuits to match so Gotta come check it out. December 14th. Be there. Be Be there. Be there, square. Thank you, Foundation. We love the money. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, Well, I'm Tucker. I'm Will. And this has been the Bulldog Banter. Thank you.